This is a real clash of the endurance titans, Cannondale's newest iteration of the legendary synapse against Trek's cobbled classic conquering Damani. Which of these two are worthy of your hard-earned money? Stick around to find out. But before I go any further, why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Historically, the Synapse formula has always been to produce an endurance bike with racing DNA and a UCI certification. This Synapse, however, especially in its basic form, retires that way of thinking. It's a bike that's all about the usability for everyday riders rather than the lofty whims of professionals. The two-tier carbon fibre levels are gone, replaced by a standard high-grade frame throughout. It comes in a bike that's equipped with lights that run off an integrated battery system, Garmin's Varia radar and a speed sensor. One thing that hasn't changed is the geometry. The DNA from its race-ready predecessors lives on, albeit with a slightly longer wheelbase to accommodate larger tyre clearances. Unlike the new Synapse, the Damani has remained part of Trek's racing stable, whilst also appealing to us real-world riders. The Damani frame set, along with its suspension, also brings class-leading tyre clearance of 38mm. The combination of all these elements ensures the Damani is capable of meeting anyone's endurance bike needs and much more beyond. The Synapse's frame design is all about making it an easy bike to live with. Gone is the internal routing of Cannondale's racier models. Instead, brake hoses channel through the fork and down tube through a single entry point. Elsewhere, there's a practicality of top tube mounts for a bag, triple bottle mounts, proper mudguard mounts, and even removable extension inserts for the through axles to make the Synapse Smart Trainer compatible. Perhaps the biggest surprise in this new practical offering, however, is the switch from Cannondale's signature BB30 bottom bracket standard shell, replaced by a threaded BSA bottom bracket. The frame also adopts the drop stay design from the Evo, System 6, and CAD 13, and incorporates Cannondale's proportional response construction. This method of creating carbon frames means each individual frame size has its own construction, including tube diameters. This ensures the largest 61 frame size and the smallest 48 cm share the same ride quality. With all those added extras, you expect there to be a weight penalty, so it's impressive to find out that the new Synapse frame weighs in at just a few grams more than its slimmer UCI-ready 2018 predecessor, at 1,035 grams compared to 1,015 grams. Moving on to the Damani now, and its frame is based around a simple idea of separating the seat stays and top tube from the seat tube. This allows the seat tube to act like a long seat post, moving fore and aft, taking the sting out of rough road. This version of the Damani has evolved with a front isospeed system that works in a very similar way. A traditional headset is replaced with a rocker cup located at the top of the headset. This design locks in the steerer tube laterally, and like the rear, it allows the steerer to flex fore and aft, smoothing out the road as you ride. The frame has some great practical features, including proper mudguard mounts and top tube mounts for a bento box style storage. There's even a storage chamber hidden underneath the down tube bottle boxes that's large enough to store a spare tube, CO2 cartridge, and a multi-tool. There is a higher spec model costing £9,000, $9,050, but for me, the Synapse Limited RLE at £6,750 or $7,050 is the pick of the range. The Limited comes with not 45 wheels, Vittoria's chunky AnyRoad Torino 032 seat tyres, and the 2 by version of Shimano's Adventure Gravel Focused GRX Di2 group set. Cannondale's slick, clever hologram save system bar and stem is used rather than a traditional setup. The aerodynamically optimised pairing doesn't use the traditional round clamp, instead it's a cradle that the bar sits on. This creates a much more aerodynamic shape which saves a claimed 9 watts over a standard setup. There's still 8 degrees of pitch adjustment so you have plenty of scope to tune the setup to your liking. The stem comes in at 80 to 120 mm lengths and Cannondale dealers should have stock of different lengths to help you get the right fit. At the back, there's a standard round 27.2 post, albeit one designed to integrate the SmartSense light radar package and a DI2 battery, and it's topped by the ever-dependable fabric scoop saddle. The not 45 wheels come tubeless ready with a bang up-to-date 45mm deep rim and a broad 21mm internal width. The hub internals and spokes both come from DT, and past experience has shown that the knot will be a tough and fast wheel. Finishing off the Limited's build is a bunch of smart tech not usually found on off-the-peg bikes. First up, there's a smart wheel sensor, now common to all Cannondale bikes. This small unit, which was designed with Garmin, gives much more accurate speed and distance data than GPS alone. And secondly, 
we also get integrated lights and a Cannondale specific iteration of Garmin's clever Varia radar. There's a lot of tech to go through here, but it's a key part of the Synapse build, so bear with me. Powering the SmartSense system is a downtube mounted power pack with a claimed five hour runtime on standard mode. I've been getting around four hours, 25 minutes down to two hours, 45 minutes on its highest setting or 20 hours in the battery save mode. The power pack charges fully from a USB-C source in three hours and will keep topped up on standby for 150 days. The Foresight front light is built for Cannondale by design. It sits underneath an integrated mount on the bar that can also hold either a GPS unit or the included Garmin Varia display. It packs 350 lumens and comes in a non-flashing STVZO approved specification for mainland Europe and a flash mode enabled version for international buyers. For those who don't know, Varia is a rear facing radar system that detects vehicles from up to 140 meters behind. The bike comes with an LED display fitted to the out front mount with 15 LEDs that light up from green to red as vehicles behind close in. It also emits an audible warning. The system works at its best when it's connected to a Garmin Edge GPS because the colour screen shows vehicles approaching in real time. Now onto the Trek, and while the £4,300 or $4,999 Damani SL6 may only come constructed from Trek's lower end OCL V500 series carbon, it's still a premium carbon frame set with some very clever tech built in. The drivetrain is SRAM's very impressive and affordable electronic group set rival ETAP Axis. Rival shifting is a match for SRAM's more expensive wireless offerings and it shares the same tunability and connectivity through the brilliant Axis app. The 4633-1036 gearing combination is pitched perfectly for a bike like this. The 4610 bottom has all the speed potential I want when descending or pushing hard on the flat. At the other end, the 3336 offers such a light, easy to spin gear that I found myself actively looking for steep climbs on my test rides just to see the Damani fly up the hills. Elsewhere, as you'd expect on a Trek, kit is provided by Bontrager. The wheels are Bontrager's Paradigm 25s. As the name suggests, they have a shallow rim that's impressively wide at 25 millimeters internally. They're shod with Bontrager's R3 tires in a wide 32 millimeters. Trek started a trend with wide rims and tires for endurance bikes and they're sticking to the format here. The cockpit combines a simple alloy R stem and the Isozone VRSF bar. The bar is designed to work with Bontrager's gel pad and tape combo and is quite frankly brilliant. Oversized top sections fit perfectly in the hand and the compact drop is so well shaped that even if you're the most hood hanging of riders, you'll find yourself enduring the aero advantage of staying down in the drops comfortably. The Damani has a unique approach to seat post because the Isospeed system relies on having the seat tube able to comply and move unhampered. Rather than a standard post, the Damani has a shortened mass that locks into place through an internal expanding clamp accessed through a slot in the seat tube. It works well, but make sure the bike is set up for you in store because the minimal adjustment available means you need to get the right length. It's topped with Bontrager's rather traditional shaped and very amply padded first saddle. The new Synapse is a wonderful place to spend multiple hours riding. The endurance geometry hits the sweet spot. It balances being comfortable with room in the drops for putting in hard efforts. If anything, the handling is a little quicker than the older bikes. I love the way in which the steering reacts snappily when I want to quickly make a correction mid-corner or navigate a pothole riddled road. In comparison, the Dramani is one of the smoothest road going bikes ever made and certainly one of the best rolling bikes I've ever tested. That's a bold statement, I know, but the way in which the Dramani simply glides over poor surfaces is truly a wonder. The Damani's origins as a cobble-busting racer set the standard for its compliance, but the bike's evolution makes it very much an endurance bike of today. Not many racers would opt for a 32mm wide tyre, but I'm sold. The R3s roll beautifully. Sure, they carry a bit more weight than a 26 or 28mm race tyre, and they're wrapped around some pretty middleweight wheels in the Paradigm 25s, but on the road, I didn't notice any excess weight. The Synapse Limited is gravel capable. On one of my longer test rides, I took the Limited over a long section of Sobri Plains Imber Range path, and it impressed, feeling as fast as some of the lighter gravel bikes I've tested on the same terrain. I'm in no way suggesting the Limited is a bike I choose to take on single track trails or more technical terrain, but for the occasional excursion onto wide byways and fire roads, it's more than up to the job. Trex Damani offers similar levels of go anywhere ability, only now can we realise just how far ahead of the time the Damani design was, and it's still bang up to date now. 
Both bikes are very well equipped and while the Synapse is the most expensive option, it does come with great quality everywhere. With a carbon bar, seat post, premium carbon wheels and an electronic group set, it's extremely well furnished. The Damani's price tag is at the very upper limit of where you'd expect to find rival axis, but when you account for the alloy bar, wheels and mid-range tyres and saddle, it doesn't quite get the value for money right. When it comes down to it, the Synapse and Damani are so very close to each other in terms of pure riding. The Damani is the more comfortable ride, but the Synapse is the livelier bike. Cannondale's got the handling pitch just right, and when you factor in all the practical additions that make things better for real world riding, it does just have the edge over the Damani. As endurance bikes go, the new Synapse is an exciting glimpse into the future of this genre. The fact that it's practical and has enhanced safety features doesn't make it dull. For a bike to ride with this much panache and stay exciting when you want to mix it up is a superb achievement. It's not only the best iteration of the Synapse to date, but it just may be the best example of, of an endurance bike out there. Those are my thoughts, but what are yours? Synapse, Damani, or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the little bell so you know when we post a new video.